Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad to be back on here. This is Brother Jonathan uh, from Crossway Ministries. That church God has raised up and is raising up in the Delta, in the Greenwood, Mississippi area. Praise God. Um, we always want to welcome you to join us um, every Sunday at 10 o'clock. Um, a church alive is worth the drive. Hallelujah. That's what we say around here. Um, you know, Highway 82 there in Greenwood, Highway 82 East, praise God. And um, it's five miles past Walmart there in Greenwood on Highway 82. If you're coming from Grenada Way or Winona Way, it's on the left, five miles past Walmart there on the left. You can't miss it. Big, shiny, bright, red, white, and black sign, Crossway Ministries. Praise God. Cannot miss it right there on the highway. If you're coming from Greenville and Indianola, it'll be on your right. Glory to the Lamb of God. We had a good service today. Um, always encouraged and challenged when the cross is preached. And the cross will get down in your heart, praise God. We're going to see that tonight. And um, I, I titled this message, Scattered Faith. The Lord led me to this. Uh, I feel I've been laboring over this all afternoon, praying, asking the Lord. And um, this was kind of one of those messages, that kind of like at the last minute, you know, uh, maybe the last 30 minutes, the Lord changed my direction i was going to go uh talking about something else but i got i got it um in reserve so next time maybe next whenever the lord leads me on that i got several um anybody that preaches and studies not just a preacher but a student of the word you know what i'm talking about you always got a message god's always put something in your heart he's always giving you a message so i got several messages uh, set aside but the lord led me in this direction tonight but um hope you got your bibles don't take for granted what's being said you need to have a bible you need to um you know to go along with the message i got tonight if you got a bible um a word for word translation you won't be scattered you won't be deceived if you got a bible and you study the bible for yourself praise god if you got the word um, in your hands and in your heart, you will not be deceived, praise God. But look with me in Matthew, starting in Matthew chapter 26. I was meditating on this a, a few days ago, thinking about this, and um, the Lord just brought me back to it. It says, Then, then said Jesus unto them all, Excuse me. Then said Jesus unto them, comma, all you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Thank God he went before us. Thank God. He went to the cross knowing their hearts, knowing our hearts. Now we can include all of us in this. All of you shall be offended. Not just the 12, the original disciples, but this is a, the cross exposes what is in our hearts. And it reveals whether we're self-dependent or depending on Christ, solely on Christ. There's so much to learn from this. You know, it was prophesied in Zechariah 13, 7, that Christ would be smitten, the shepherd, the Christ, Jesus Christ, the Christ, the, that the Messiah, the shepherd would be smitten. That's the, the death of the cross, the sufferings and the death of the cross. And it was already prophesied that when that ha would happen, and it did happen, Jesus gave him a four, a fair warning this was at the lord's supper um there at the um at the the last supper the passover the last supper with his disciples 
he forewarned them. Well, he already been telling them for two and a half, three and a half years. He'd been telling them, you know, that he was born to die. He was born. He was going to Jerusalem and he was going to be killed, which we know it wasn't a murder. He laid down his life. He's the good shepherd who laid down his life, but he's used, you know, the word I will be killed. He, you know, he will be killed. Um, and, but on three days later, I will rise again. And, um, and Peter said in verse 33, like all of us have done this, we've all boasted. Peter said, Peter answered and said unto him, though all men shall be offended because of you, yet will I never be offended. <laughs> yet will I never be offended. Uh, but like I said, the cross, it, it challenges, exposed what was in their hearts. He already knew what they was going to do. Um, he said, all of you, all you shall be offended because of me this night. Now it's not, it didn't say I will offend you. It means because of me, I looked up the word offended and it means a uh, scandalize where we also get the, when you look at the definition of Satan or the devil, it means scandalion, a scandalizer. So predicate based on where your faith is at will determine whether you fall victim to your faith being scattered or not. Well, it's predicated on where your faith is because Satan is always there alongside lurking in the dark. To He's always lurking close by to, to see where your faith is at if you're if you're if, if you're going to be a victim if you're going to be if you're going to fall victim to to be the prey of satan and so offended means scandalized also means to entrap trip up stumble it also means to entice to sin and also means the occasion to fall you see jesus christ did not offend any by yeah yes his words Yes, he, come, he said, I come to bring a sword. You know, you, you know, you say I come to bring peace on the earth, but rather a sword. You know, for he, he said, I will divide, you know, you know, mother and uh, mother, uh, a daughter, father and son, you know, mother-in-law, uh, uh, a son-in-law, uh, you know, so on and so forth. I come to divide. And he said, your enemy shall be those of, of your own household shall be your foes so you know jesus what jesus done at the cross that night had to be done the way it was done in the fashion it was done to see jesus done everything out in the open he did not do anything in the corner you know he has no no hidden agenda he had no hit it was all done it was not done in secret it was done out in the open to reveal all of us, you know, the bite to all of us was in our heart, you know, and, and you know, I'm reminded of Luke chapter two, where um Simeon, the old man Simeon, you know, the Lord had told him he would see the Christ as a baby before he died when Jesus was born. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It was the Lord spoke to his heart and said that he would see him. He would not die until he laid eyes on, on the Messiah, until he laid eyes on the baby Jesus. And he gave a word of prophecy to Mary and Joseph and told, told them that this child is set for the rising and fall of many in Israel. You see, predicate, and I, and I butchered the verse. I didn't have it open in front of me, but go read it. Luke chapter two. There's probably more words to it than that, but I was just giving you shooting from the hip. But, you know, he basically told them that, see, what Jesus done at the cross, what he would do, what he was born to go do at that cross. See, it's a dividing line. It's going to get down in our heart. It's going to be, the, it's, it's going to occasion the rise and the, the fall predicated on, you know, what you do with Christ. Amen. So Jesus said this here at the last supper with the disciples, all you shall be offended. And he, and he goes on to say that you shall be scattered. And, 
and it's, that's predicated. He didn't want to just scatter anybody because the Bible says, and, and see, Jesus does not want to scatter anybody, but the cross would do its part. It, it has an effect on the heart to basically, you can narrow this on down to the nitty gritty, to the heart. The heart is going to rightly divide, excuse me, the cross is going to rightly divide, you know, what's in our heart. The cross is going to scatter, you know, it's going to break up everything that's not, it's going to challenge us and, you know, but, but the, the offense of the cross comes when, you know, the, when you're weak in the faith, you know, that's what I'm talking about. I got some scripture to go with that, you know, and they was listening, of course, no doubt the disciples in that day, that night, they had done been surrounded by everything they was hearing, you know, from the from the Judaizers, you know, from the Pharisees, from the Zealots, and so many people, the Romans, you know, all that they had their eyes on so much going on, you know, all the commotion and the 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 events that was unfolding, and 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 fear of man, fear of man was an issue. So Jesus already knew this. Jesus knew what was going to happen. But thank God it says, "But I will, but after I am risen again, I will go before you in Galilee." See, thank God he didn't leave them scattered. He knew that they was going to be scattered. But he didn't leave them. Oh, glory to God. He didn't leave them like that. He, he did the work at the cross and rose again and went before them and met them. And, and then later on, you can use, you can say this about that going before them. He gave, he would teach Paul. He would later on, after he had risen, after he finished the work at Calvary and rose again, he, he went before us all. Glory to God. He's went before he taught Paul the meaning of the new covenant. Um, and, um, and I got some more scriptures on. Hope y'all really, hope y'all want to hear some reading tonight. Cause I got several scriptures I want to read and try to elaborate on. Them. Uh, I've already been praying, so I will. I will. I will uh, I'm not going to pray no more right now. I've already been praying. I just want to get into the Word. Praise God. Um, let me see where I want to go next. Uh, back to Hebrews. I've been going there a lot. Praise God. Uh, chapter thirteen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Be not carried about with that carried about. Carried about. Scatter. Carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them who have been occupied therein. You see, if your faith is not right. If you're misplayed, your faith is scattered. It's because there's something wrong. You're listening to something else. If you're listening to strange, see, the only way our heart can be established by grace, with grace, is to be hearing the right thing, to be hearing the correct doctrine, not strange doctrines, not anything other than sound doctrine. Not If we're not hearing Christ, and what he done for us, your faith will be scattered. You will not grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, the word scattered means scorpizo. That's where we get the word scorpion. Listen to this now. Scattered in the Greek. Scorpizo. It means penetrating to dis dissipate. Put to flight, to pierce, sting. You see, when, when, when it false doctrine and its teachers know how to get into our minds and their words penetrate our hearts negatively, but, but sounds positively. Do you get that? See, false doctrine penetrates our hearts negatively but it sounds right sounds positively there's a way proverbs 14 uh 26 says there is a way which seems right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death but it ultimately will will put to flight our faith taking us away from the truth says so what when you're scattered when your faith is scattered Satan, the scandalizer, I told you that scandalion, the scandalizer, he's looking for prey. He's looking for those whose faith is misplaced. 
so they can say, well, that preacher offended me. I got offended. Well, if you got offended from the truth, that means it ain't the fault. It ain't the preacher's fault. If he's preaching the truth, he didn't offend. And Satan, that scandalizer, Satan worked to put that offense in there based on where, if you're being led of the, if you're walking in the flesh or walking in the spirit, it's all based on what your faith is in. You know, if you, you know, to be carnally minded is death. Romans 8, go read round 5 through 7, you'll see about, you know, the mind. Every one of those verses has to do something to do with the mind. You know, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Carnally minded is when your faith, your mindset, your focus is on yourself. Or other voices, you're listening to other things, other messages. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to get to some of this some more of that in a minute. You know, but if you're walking in the spirit, to be spiritually minded means your faith is in Christ and your, your focus, your mind is stayed on Christ. Your mind is stayed in the finished work of Christ. Amen. You know, he's our high tower we run to and we're safe. Amen. We run to that rock that is higher than I. Oh, hallelujah. I run to that rock that is higher than I. And that running ain't just at your initial salvation when you first got saved. We got to run every day. I run daily to that rock. Hallelujah. Paul said in Hebrews chapter 6, you know, we 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 flee for refuge. We, we have fled for refuge to the hope that is set before us which hope we have as an anchor to the soul, both sure and steadfast. See what Christ done at that cross. We need to run to that every day, not just one time, but we got to flee. Don't that, that tells us right there. This is how serious it is when it comes to our faith. We got to quickly turn away from any voice. that's not preaching the cross. Don't give heed to it. Because you will be deceived. I don't care how good they sound. Satan is out to penetrate. He's scattering. To pierce. To sting it. To put your faith to flight. To take you away. To take you away from the faith. Praise God. The heart can only be established with grace. When we turn from everything else. Every strange doctrine. Anything other than the cross. Any preacher, teacher, prophet, etc. that doesn't preach the cross whereby grace can build us up and develop the people is scattering the flock, causing great harm. You know, Acts, Acts 20, let's go there. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I got, I'm going to go to some Old Testament scriptures too. Examples. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all bear with me. Going the wrong way. <laughs> Turning the wrong way, Acts 20. Glory to God. It says, starting in verse 29, it says, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. That's where I want to go. To the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. You see, only the grace of God can build us up, but it has to be grace according to Scripture, the grace of God in truth. And that only comes when, as I read in uh, earlier, I was looking at Isaiah 54, around verse 14, I think it is, you know, that you... In righteousness, you shall be established. In righteousness, Pastor Ball's talking about today about the you know righteousness is in Christ. 
You know, it's, he is my righteousness. We don't have no righteousness within ourselves. If you're looking to yourself to try to save yourself or to make yourself acceptable to God or to make yourself a Christian, you can't make yourself a Christian. You got to know where to put your faith and keep it there. So if, if our heart, for a heart to be established by grace, we got to turn away from anything and everybody that's not preaching the cross. That's not preaching grace according to truth. Colossians 1, 6, I believe it is, says, you know, the great, you, since you knew the grace of God in truth, we need to keep hearing what we heard from the beginning. Hearing the grace of God in truth, that which saved us in the beginning. And people today have the audacity to say doctrine don't matter. I y'all talk about I've had Christians, you know, friends of mine that I know said that people have said stuff like that. Why you don't we don't need to worry about doctrine, you know, or, or all this warning. I beg to differ, my friend. You don't know what you're talking about. Doctrine throughout the Bible, it matters what you're listening to. Praise God. It's warning after warning. Praise God. And, and, and warning does not stop, as Pastor Boss brought out today, about it's for, to keep you safe. <laughs> it's for your good that I, even, even though, you know, some would say, well, I don't need no more warning. And they, they could have said, you know, we already know we're walking. Cause he told the church at Philippi, you know, talked about they was walking, you know, he, he wrote that letter to tell them, you know, you're walking in that those that were already walking in the spirit. But he said, I, I keep, in other words, we keep hearing warning. We need to keep warning them so they can stay. We got to keep hearing this over and over. The truth, keep hearing. He said, this is not for your harm, but for but for you, it is safe. It's safe to keep hearing sound. Doctor, that's the only way we're going to be established. In righteousness, we're established in righteousness, which is our union with Christ in the death, baptized into his death. Praise God. And that's the only way the heart can be established with grace. Praise God. Grace comes from Jesus who was full and is full of grace and truth. Praise God. That's the only, word, that's the only place grace can come to us. It's from Jesus Christ and what he accomplished at the cross. Look at John 15. Praise God. Simple message. Simple. The Lord... I thank the Lord for leading me. You know, he reminded me just, you know, to preach something I wasn't even planning on preaching, but he, he knew what needed to be said tonight to, 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 to remind the people, remind me, remind the church uh, where to keep your faith and how to keep your heart established in grace, on way for grace. Uh, it's, even Jesus himself warned. Look at John chapter 15. It says in verse 6, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. I'm going to explain that. We see Christians, how many times Christians have they wither away. That's real. This stuff happens. That's why Jesus said that if you don't abide in me, he said, if any man abide not in me, is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men, remember we're talking about scattered faith. Listen to this. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Ultimately, that's the seriousness of a matter which is hell fire. So Jesus gives a warning, but to abide in him, but even before the ultimate goal of the enemy is to is to destroy you. But even before that, it's it's little by little. If you stop abiding in Christ, it says, see, then you become, see, what happens is you start withering away, you dry up. If your faith, if you're not constantly hearing this gospel every day, listen moment by moment. We got to be handed over. The Holy Spirit is constantly handing us over, delivering us to the death of Christ. The Holy Spirit would not point us to a charlatan. He would not point us to some preacher that's not preaching the cross. He would not. I don't care how popular. Even I'm gonna go in and just get down to 
make some people mad, maybe the Pentecostal churches that don't preach Christ and Him crucified all the time. Now, I'm Pentecostal to the bone. I'm baptized with the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues. Amen. I thank God for that. But many Pentecostal churches, they you all you, you know those who's telling the truth, child of God. You don't have to be deceived. Those that's not preaching Christ and them crucified, putting the emphasis on that, what do Pentecostal churches put the emphasis on? The Holy Spirit. They put you hear it, if they ain't preaching Christ and them crucified, they talk about the they put emphasis on the Holy Spirit, oh the anointing. Ah, oh, oh, they even put that little <laughs> They put that, I, I know it sounds funny, but I'm serious. They even got to put that little extra, ah, they got to put that extra emphasis on the anointing. So and so, oh my, oh, the Holy Spirit, he anointed the service today. Oh, he anointed the preacher. He was such an anointed man of God. He brought it, he talked about, oh, and, and they may preach the baptism of the Holy Spirit every Sunday. You know, but if they're not putting emphasis, listen, Yes, we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we need, yes, it needs to be preached. But we need to put emphasis on the way you get Pentecost, brother. Amen. Is in the Lamb. Amen. My brother said. That's right. Pentecost is in the Lamb. Glory to God. Everything comes from Christ and crucified. If the emphasis is not being put on the finished work of Christ on the cross, that means that something else is going to be the emphasis. And if something else is, it's a misplaced faith. The Holy Spirit does not point to himself. Jesus said he will not testify of himself, but he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Amen. There was something else I was going to say. I forgot about the Holy Spirit. He will not boast in himself. He boasts in what he, he speaks of what Christ already accomplished at the cross. Praise God. Praise God. Now, let's go to some of these Old Testament. Well, before I do that, I want to go to look at Acts 5. Then we're going to go to some go to Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Acts 5. Look at this. Talking about, see, Satan is going to work, and he's going to work through those even using the same terminologies. Men of renown, men, men are well, you know, men that are popular. He's going to use those that may use the word cross. Satan is very subtle. He's very subtle. We, that's why we got to know this truth for ourselves and apply it daily. Acts 5, 36. For before these days, now this was during the time of a great persecution going on in the early church. And, uh, of course, the church was being dispersed abroad, scattered because of the persecution, which was, in a sense, positive on their part. It's positive for the, as far as the work of God. They were scattered abroad to, for the gospel. See, what the devil meant for evil, it also turned out for good because the gospel was able to spread all over the world, you know, because of the persecution. So, but that's not the type of scattering I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I'm trying to get down to the scattering part of the, the individual being scattered, the heart being scattered, the faith. Look at verse 36. For before these days rose up Theatus, 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 I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men about 400 joined themselves who was slain. See, the end result of a misplaced faith is death. The wages of sin is death. If your faith is in something, if you're hearing something that's not Christ and Him crucified, it's death. And joined themselves who were slain, and all as many as obeyed Him were scattered and brought to naught. And then here's then it, even some here's another one right here. After this, after this man rose up Judas of Galilee, in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him. And he also perished, and all even as many as obeyed him were dispersed. 
And now I say unto you, refrain from these men. Now this, this one speaking is, is stood up there one in the council of it says of Gamaliel. There, there stood there stood up one in the council, a Pharisee named yeah, Gamaliel himself. Gamaliel was saying this, and it says, and listen to this now. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men. And let them alone. Speaking to the church, to the disciples who were preaching the truth. Refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Lest happily you be found even to fight against God. Little did he know it. Even though Gamaliel was not even he wasn't even a disciple he was a pharisee but yet god had him to say up rise god allowed him to say that in essence god had to say in other words this is this truth this is a truth even though he was not necessarily in the truth but this was truth it's see when the see if you're predicated on where our faith is at we're determined if you're fighting against God, also the work of God. See, if this work is of men, it will come to naught. See, but if it's of God, you cannot overthrow it. That's what it said. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Lest happily you be found even to fight against God. See, which side of the cross are you on? Like I said, the cross is going to divide. It's going to, it's going to reveal what's in our heart. And those today, they're speaking ill against Christ and Him crucified. Or and those that, are, well, they won't outright say I'm against Christ, but they speak against, they speak against the preachers of the cross. Those that say determined a lot. You know, we say the word determined, and you know, we we always talk about the importance of being determined. And but we learn. And I thank God, speaking of the heart, I thank God for what Brother Jeremy said last Sunday. It needed to be said. It's not just our determination to preach it, but see, this is a heart, man. It's got to be determined. It's got to be in our heart. It's a heart. It's all about, it's all boils down to the heart. Everything boils down to the heart. We got to be determined to keep our faith, not just determined to preach it. We got to be determined to guard our heart with all diligence, for out of it, out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs uh, chapter four, I believe, says that. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of the, out of it are the issues of life. So we don't want to be found fighting against God. We don't want to be found an enemy of the cross. And when you study out that in Philippians 3 about Paul said, I weep about, he was weeping about those that are enemies of the cross of Christ. When I first heard that or read that in the past, I thought, well, that was just those obviously blatant false preachers that's preaching some weird hocus pocus stuff or just, you know, just way out there and far left. I thought that's what the enemy of the cross, but the more you study that, just like what Jesus said in Matthew 26 about all of you this night shall be offended because of me. See, if we don't keep our faith where it needs to be, we will be an enemy because the flesh is always attempting to pull us away. Listen to this. If, if faith is scattered, misplaced, or misplaced, we will be easily prey, an easy prey to men who present a smoother message because the flesh is always looking for something other than the cross. If you get offended at the message of the cross, you say, I don't like the tone of voice. I don't like the way he said that. And if you think you can do it much better, you're, it's all that's all flesh. That's all flesh talking and thinking. You know, 
and before you know it, you're going to turn away and you're going to be listening to somebody else. We see scattering going on right now all over the land. We see people being scattered. Those that have set under cross preachers for years. Satan is looking for a weak heart, a heart that's not established by grace. He's looking for somebody who can, he can influence and people are running all over the land. They're getting offended of the cross. They're running to and fro. They're getting offended of the preacher that says determined is determined. It is determined to preach Christ and crucify. So they leave that church and they look for, they go find another church, but they really, what they're really looking for, they're not really looking for those preaching the man. They say they are. They say they believe in the cross. No, when you leave those that God has raised up, that God he puts you under, I mean, over you and, put you in, so to speak, put you in that that assembly that's preaching Christ and crucified, and you leave that, you say you're going to greener grass, you know, greener pastures, but really, no, really, that that's not that's not what happened. It's the flesh be leading you. It's the flesh, you know, uh, you know, le le leading you. You're led by the flesh instead of led by the spirit. You're, you're looking for a smoother message. That's really what you're looking for. Somebody that's not so, that doesn't warn as much. Somebody that you claim, the claims are more loving. I'm going to get into some of that in a minute. I got a few minutes left. Let's go to some of these in Old Testament references. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 23. Woe be unto the pastors who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the pastors who feed my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, says the Lord. This is the Lord's words. Amen. This is not my word. This is the Lord's. That's what he says. Woe unto those pastors who destroy and scatter the sheep. How are they destroying it? That was in the Old Testament. But it's where we are today. Pastors and preachers are still scattering the people by not preaching Christ and him crucified. They're preaching strange doctrines. They're preaching that which is not that common salvation that has always worked. So they're scattering the people. Or they're, bringing, they're allowing others to come in behind the pulpit. They're allowing different voices, different preachers to come in. They would be held accountable for that they will be held responsible it's causing great harm as pastor paul said today he brought it out it's causing great harm to the body when they allow different preaching different messages going on strange doctrines uh, uh, and some would say well that's not strange this is our old time pentecost the way we've hey i don't care if it's if it's an old time way god is not going back He's going forward. He wants us to, as Proverbs 4.18 says, the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more into that perfect day. God wants us to grow and not just stay in the same light that you've always walked in or the same old time religion or old Pentecostal way. No, he wants us, because that's what they say. Well, he's a good Pentecostal preacher. He preaches good on the Holy Spirit. He can quote scriptures. Real good. I don't care how much scripture he uses, how many, how much scripture he quotes. If he's not preaching Christ and him crucified, Amen. He's not helping the people grow. As Paul said, that the grace of God builds you up in Acts twenty. He see he put emphasis on grace in truth, so that the grace of God can build us up. And then he says in chapter thirteen. It's a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not strange doctrine. Because that tells us right there that grace won't flow from strange doctrine. The grace of God is now. Now, hyper grace will. I'm going to talk about that hyper grace a little bit. Hyper is hyper faith, hyper love, hyper grace. It's a hyper means it's something extreme. It's, it's something that's not yet not previously taught hyper the word hyper we've heard that terminology hyper grace you know 
Uh, Joseph Prince is one of those that teaches a hyper grace. It's another grace. It's, it's hyper means something. Now he won't call it hyper. It was a it was a phrase coined when he because he now he coins the grace called the grace revolution, so to speak. You know they people talk about the grace revolution, but it's not a grace according to scripture. It's not the grace of God in truth. It's another grace, just like Paul said. There's another gospel. So hyper, you know, there's those that come again trying to bring another Jesus because it's Satan himself. It's not it's not it's not God's Jesus. God only has one Jesus and one place at Calvary that he works by. You know, but I'm talking about Satan has his ministers of light presenting another Jesus, another gospel empowered by another spirit. So there's so much out there, guys. There's so much out there. That's why we got to know where to keep our faith. Notice back in, I'm going to go to uh, another passage in the Old Testament in a second. But back to John 15 for a minute. I went through with that. It says, if any man abides not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withered. And men gather. See, men will gather those. Now, we like to, that's why there's more to it than just the, than the initial death and going to hell when he said they should be cast into the fire and burn. There's more to it than that end result of of a false way. I want you to look, take a look at that part about the individual. I'm dealing, see, I'm trying to deal with the individual child of God tonight. I'm trying to get it down to where we are. I'm trying to get it down to the, it's the heart of the matter. If your faith, if you're not abiding in the vine, Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. He is the vine, meaning by virtue of the cross, we are the branches when we was planted together in the likeness of his death. That's how we become a branch. Hallelujah. When we was born again, united with him in his death. Hallelujah. And we got to abide right there. See, there are those that preach a, a false grace message that says, oh, it happens automatically. Or at your salvation, you were saved by grace. Yes. Or you didn't get saved if it wasn't by grace. That's true. But they say it happened one time, automatically happened, or even, yeah, even automatically, or happened one time when you got saved. And then after that, they say those that believe in once saved, always saved, which is a lie. They say grace just automatically flows no matter what you do. They even got a, a, a false teaching stemming from Calvinism that's called uh, irresistible grace. It's one of the letters in the tulip. I ain't got time to go into all that. Um, it's an acronym, you know, a, a word that spells out the word tulip that stems from Calvinism. And each letter of the word tulip means something. I'm not talking about a flower tulip. They just it spells out tulip. It's an acronym. Each letter represents something that they teach. And the I in the word tulip means irresistible grace. And what it means is it's going to flow. You can't resist it. Grace is going to flow no matter what you believe or what you do. As long as you got saved one time, once upon a time you got saved, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's what they teach. There's nothing you can do to stop that grace from flow. I used to believe that. I used to believe that false teaching. That I was. it was automatically, it flowed automatically. I, I just believe one time. And it was it, and it's, it's irresistible grace, meaning you can't resist it. Yes, according to Scripture, you can resist, you can fight against it, because I got Scripture to prove that. It says, uh, it says, let, you know, let us have grace. Let the heart be established with grace. You know, uh, it talks about you have fallen from grace if your faith is misplaced. There's plenty of Scripture. I don't have them all in front of me. Go read your Bible. Study your Bible. Quit listening to what those from the cemetery have taught you. You know, people from the cemetery have taught, you know, they, well, I grew up in this. I'm a reformed theological Baptist. Did you know that? I'm, ref I'm, a, I'm in reformed Baptist theology. I, people have boasted in that. I've heard that different stuff. Reform this, reform that, you know, but we don't need a reformed man's doctrine. 
We need another reformation of the cross. Hallelujah. We need to come back to the cross. Hallelujah. To what's written in the Bible. What's already there in the Bible. Instead of listening to strange doctrine. Listening to false teachers. That make you feel good. See, see that kind of message makes people feel good. That says I don't have to do nothing. But believe one time. Just believe one time. And now I'm set. I can never lose it. People love to hear that. That's why they don't want to hear preaching now they don't want to really hear no preaching they just say i know all about that i don't need you to go preach to them over there in 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 g town <laughs> go over on the other side of the tracks preach to them they need to hear it i don't need to hear it i already know about it that tells me right there you you need to hear it more <laughs> you, you you need to hear it. if you think you know it all you need to hear it you need to hear it my friend Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You need to hear that Lamb, bro. That's right. Where is the Lamb? You see, the Holy Spirit is asking where. See, He's always going to be preaching and asking where is the Lamb. And the true child of God, like Isaac was, see, He was taught by His father Abraham what we do. This is just what we do, son. You know, he knew that. And we wake up every day and we, we build an altar. We, we offer up sacrifice. And, and He taught Isaac that. So when it come time, one day they was God told Abraham, see, your faith is going to be tested. Just like I said that in, in Matthew 26, their faith was tested. But Jesus knew they would have been, they all was going to be offended of him that night. And they were, they all was offended. They all were scattered abroad. And, and when it come time, see, God was testing Abraham to offer up his only son, Isaac. And Speaking about love, the very first mention of love is mentioned right there, predicate sinning around the sacrifice. See, people, they talk about love, worship. The very first mention of the word worship is in Genesis 22. Sinning around the sacrifice. Sinning around the cross. Worship, love. You know, is that the very first mention of those is right there at the cross. Sinning around Christ and Him crucified. That's what it's all about. Anyway, God tested Abraham and told him to go take your son, your only son, which he had to, he, God did this with Abraham and Isaac to show a perfect type of Christ, a perfect example of Christ laying down his life for you and I. And, and also, Abraham was a type of God, the father given his only, you know, given his only begotten son. So God tested Abraham and and Abraham walked in faith. He knew, see, he didn't know exactly what was going to happen, how God was going to do it, but he knew that God was going to make a way because he already had promised that through Isaac would come the nation of Israel, would come, a, I mean, he already promised him an inheritance, praise God, through Isaac. So he knew that if, if I even if I slay my son Isaac, God's going to raise him again. He knew he had faith that God's going to make a way even if he had to slay him. And, but he told Isaac, because see, Isaac was being taught. Isaac had already been taught the way. And, and, and without Abraham having to say anything, they was walking up the hill, walking toward that mountain. Moriah, I think it was. Walking toward Mount Moriah. Walking toward the mountain. And, and Abraham wasn't saying anything, because no doubt Abraham was praying. You know, he was just believing God, praying. And Isaac spoke up. Oh, see, if we're raising our children right, hallelujah, they're going to speak up. And see, the, and that you can say that about the congregation that knows the truth, just like when, 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 when I, when, uh, you know, the, the story of death in the pottage, poison in the pot, you know, when, you know, the story there, and I, and I, when I, was it, oh, I'm getting trying to train of thought. When, um, I don't keep wanting to say Isaac, talking about, um, uh, there is in Kings, I think it's chapter uh, four or five. Anyway, there was uh, I, uh, Elijah. I just can't want to say Isaac. Y'all forgive me, Elijah. And anyway, the story goes is one from the from the camp, one from the school of the prophets went out and, and picked wild gourds and come back and put wild gourds in the pot, pot of pottage which represented the word of God. See, put a mixture in. But see, those that know the truth, they're going to rise up like Isaac did. He said, Father, I see the wood 
and I see the fire for the sacrifice, but where is the lamb for a sacrifice? I see the wood and the fire, but Father, where is the lamb? See, he knew what to ask. See, if you have your faith, faith where it needs to be, you're going to be able to recognize false doctrine when you hear it, child of God. You're going to be able to know who's preaching the truth and who ain't preaching it. You're going to recognize it. Isaiah, I mean, Isaac said, Father, where's the lamb? See, we need to be asking that question. Where's the lamb? See, if you're raising your children right, they're going to grow up to know where, what, this is what we do. My daddy taught, this is just how it is. We, you know, we, we, we go to church. <laughs> you know, we, we have devotions. We, we know that where to put our faith at is in Christ and his finished work of the cross. And he's going to be asking, them kids are going to be asking questions. Amen. So back to the, now back to Kings, the book of Kings about, those when when that one put poison in the pot, some of them spoke up and said, "Oh man of God, there is death in the pot." Hallelujah! See, you know there's a mixture going on when you hear it. When you know it ain't Christ and Him crucified, you're gonna be able to say, "Preacher, this ain't right. Something ain't right. There is death." See, some of you are sitting under a. Those that claim cross or may have once preached it like they should have preached it. And you know better. You know there's a mixture going on, but you just being hushed by, you know, playing quiet mouse. But there needs to be some more people rising up, speaking out. Oh, man of God, there's death in the pot. This ain't right. There's a mixture going on. Praise God. I didn't even plan to go there, but hallelujah to the Lamb. I want God to have his way. Oh, I got to hurry. I'm trying to find a place to close. Ezekiel 34. Look at this. 5 through 6. And they were scattered because there, there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. Let me stop there for a second. I'm going to elaborate on 6. I'm going to read verse 6. But let me try to elaborate on verse 5. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. If there's no true under shepherd, under the shepherd, if he's not abiding in the vine himself, see, so goes the pulpit, goes the pew. If the preacher's not preaching Christ and him crucified, they will be scattered. The people will be scattered. They were scattered because there is no shepherd that means one who's preaching right. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field. See, when your faith is scattered, that means you're an easy victim of prey, but you don't have to be victimized. You can have your faith in Christ constantly and be triumphing, as the Bible says. He always causes us to triumph, hallelujah, in Christ, hallelujah, when our faith is right. He always causes us to triumph. We don't have to be a victim. But you will be a victim if you're not hearing sound doctrine. If you're not hearing the message of the cross, you will be like meat to all the beasts of the field. You become as meat to all the beasts of the field. That means you're just like I heard a man say one time, older than me, white-headed. I ran into him. I used to be friends. Me and him used to be friends. And I would... I was influenced by him because I was listening to then. He and he turned me on to to John MacArthur, and I was listening to John MacArthur's sermons and his book, reading his book, even ordered his Bible, John MacArthur Study Bible. See, I was like that. I didn't have no true shepherd preaching the cross, so I was like, I was I become meat to all the beasts of the field, just whatever. And he was, and he's still that way. Last time I talked to him. It would, well, it's been a few couple years, but I don't know where he's at today. But I ran into him again, and I and I start trying to talk to him about the cross, you know, about I listened to the cross preached. I said that's what I want. He said, well, I listened to a lot of different preachers. I listened to just a lot of different ones. See, what that is is scattered faith. You're you, you're nothing more than meat to all the beasts of the field, as Paul said. Grievous wolves will come in and and not sparing the flock. See, they want you to be dispersed abroad. They want you the, the the wolves, all they want is gain. They want all the wolves want is just to fill their pockets. 
The hirelings. All the hirelings want us to fill their pockets. They don't care if you become as meat to all the beasts of the field. Look at verse 6. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them. And I'm reminded when I see that phrase, I circle that phrase high hill. I think I circled it one time before because Pastor Voss, I think he preached on this. Somebody was preaching it and I wrote a note down right there on the top of my page. And I think Pastor Voss was preaching that. I don't know who, but anyway, somebody that Sunday and I took note of it. Or it might have been from my study. Either way, it don't matter. I'm not trying to get credit for it. <laughs> it don't matter who's trying to get credit for it. Hallelujah. I don't matter. See, <laughs> glory to God. When you that's another subject right there. When your faith is right, that's another preach, that's another sermon. You won't care who gets credit for it. You just want you want everybody to you want to feed the flock of God. Amen. Glory to God. But either way, that phrase that says, My sheep wandered throughout all the mountains and upon every high hill. And I circled that phrase high hill. And I have a note up here that I wrote some time ago. It says, There is always a big gathering of people. On Fool's Mountain, who will tell you exactly what you want to hear because there's no true shepherd there speaking the truth. See there? See, when you went back to John 15 and 6, and I'm going to close with this. When Jesus said, Men, see, if your faith is with it, I tried to explain it a while ago, but I, I, I butchered it trying to explain it, so I'll go back to it to tie into this. In John 15, 6, he said, if you're not abiding in me, in the vine, you're withered. You will become a branch that is withered. And what's happening, it's the same as you can teach on that root of bitterness springing up and trouble. It's the same. It all goes along, all being influenced by the scandalizer. Satan, he's always doing this in your ear. He's always, and he's, he's looking for weakness. See, the scandalizer, Satan, he's looking for prey. He's as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So when Jesus said, if you don't abide in me, you are like a branch that is withered. That means you're getting weak in the faith. Your faith is scattered. You're, 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 there's a root of bitterness. There's something you've been listening to something that's not right. It's poison. Poison doctrine, something that's not right. Or you say, you may say tonight, one of you may say, well, I'm not listening to any preacher. I'm just doing my, well, that means you're still, it's still seducing spirits of, uh, 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 make, of faith in itself. It's still, it don't matter. Satan don't care how he deceives you. He don't care if it's a false teacher. He don't care if, if, if it's just vice. He don't care if it's, if your faith is in, in a, in a, pothole <laughs> he don't care if your faith is your faith is in a coat hanger he don't care he don't care where your faith is at as long as he can get you not putting your faith in christ on a daily basis and keeping and having that relationship see god wants you to have a relationship with his son and be in proper fellowship walking in the light as he is in the light but if you're not doing that, if you're not abiding in Christ, you're going to be withered. You, you, little by little, I've seen Christians over the years, they, they throw in the towel. I've ran into Christians that I knew when I first got saved, and I tried to talk. One time, they was on fire. I'm talking about some individuals. I won't call their name, a particular couple that I know. I ran into them, and I was trying to invite them to church and talk to them. About love. Okay, 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 John. You know They, they didn't want to hear us. They were trying to hurry up and get it, but they used to be on fire. They used to be on fire for Jesus, but now when they run into me, they don't feel comfortable around me. See, it's because see, that can happen to any Christian. If you're not abiding in the vine, you will wither. And then that phrase that says, and men gather them. See, if your faith is scattered, then you'll be gathered. Do you see that? If your faith is scattered, you will be gathered by men. Praise God. You don't have to be gathered, scattered and gathered. By men, you don't have to be meat to the beast of the field. Hope this helps some of you. I hope it's challenged you to keep your faith. You don't have to be scattered. Your faith doesn't have to be scattered. Keep your faith in that same place, that same means that that saves you. That grace of God in truth. 
Keep your faith right there. That same, see, I, I, I didn't get into all these other things I was going to talk about, about hyper faith. Let me go and run through it real quick. Hyper faith, that word of faith come out of hyper faith. Remember I told you hyper is anything other than what was originally given, the, the faith. So it's something to the extreme. It also means taking it to the extreme, something that's not biblical. So we have a hyper faith movement that come out, um, you know, 50 or 70 years ago. E.W. Kenyon and, you know, John Hagen and uh, Kenneth Copeland is some of the fathers of this thing. This hyper faith where we get the word of faith doctrine and that confessional message, you know, claim it, name it, claim it, you know, or, and they I even see people in cross preaching churches today that associate with the cross saying, I declare this, I speak this. And they'll say, if you, if you say anything negative, I saw a comment today on Facebook. Somebody said that, you know, you know, don't say that you're sick. Don't, 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 we ain't going to go there. Don't even say you're sick. We're going to, you know, that stems from the word of faith because my Bible, I have a Bible, by the way, I have a Bible and my Bible says, you know, uh, uh, if anybody's sick among you, let him tell the elders of the church, you know, confess it. You know, I'm sick. I need somebody to pray for me. You know, that's, that is an act of faith when you say uh, that to me, that, so they say it's a, not an act of faith. I beg to differ. It is an act of faith. Lord, I'm sick. I believe I'm coming to you and I need you to heal me. Preachers pray for me. You know, brothers in Christ pray for me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So we get hyper faith. Uh, you know, that's another, it's a false faith. I'm talking about strange doctrines tonight. If you're listening to strange doctrine, listen, you're going to have scattered faith. Hyper love is another one. I'm going to hurry up and come to a close. Hyper love. Well, in the hyper love movement, we have an ecumenical movement. A tolerance, tolerance, no preaching on sin, etc. I mean, everybody just come, all religions come together. But I've noticed it's not just in all the religions. See, Satan is very subtle. Even in the cross camps, some of the cross preaching churches among the, or those that, that associate with the cross. There is a hyper love. See, Satan is very subtle. There is a hyper love. And they're lugging, though they, they would not dare say we need to bring all religions together. Now, that they will draw the line on certain things. But, like I said, Satan is very subtle. He is, listen, as one preacher said, he's a bad devil, but he's a good bad devil. <laughs> he's good at what he does. He's a bad devil, but he's a good bad devil. He's very subtle. And now... Even amongst cross associates or whatever, the emphasis now the emphasis is in lo on love, in the love of God. It ain't just the hyper love of ecumenical, but it's also emphasis being put on the love or the or preaching the fruits, preaching the fruit of the spirit, putting the emphasis on the fruit of the spirit instead of putting emphasis on Christ and Him crucified. That's a that's a hyper love. That's not the love of God in truth. It's not the love of God according to the Bible. The love of God preached. We preach the love of God in truth, just like if we preach the grace of God in truth. It's going to be in Christ, who is the truth. Christ him crucified. We're going to lay that foundation. Paul said, "Take heed how you build upon this foundation." See, we see preachers today don't take heed no more. Many are not taking heed. They're just allowing the sheep to be scattered. Then another one, of course, and I'm closing with this, is hyper grace. We've all heard of that. It's the grace revolution. It, it says the justified believer never needs to confess their sins anymore after getting saved. That's what they teach. After you get saved, you don't need to confess your sins no more. Because, see, that goes hand in hand with that hyper faith. They, they're, they're birds of a flat feather. They flock together. The hyper grace and the hyper faith go hand in hand. Because to say the hyper grace, now they teach don't confess your sins anymore after getting saved. You don't have to confess your sins. Well, that stems from hyper faith, which says don't say anything negative. Don't preach against sin. Don't 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 say I'm a sinner. Don't talk. You don't even talk about sin. You know, uh, uh, you don't have to confess it. In other words, confess I'm a king's kid. You know, you got to. Have a positive confession. Always have a positive confession. Don't say anything negative. 
And they definitely don't want you to preach a negative message. You know, it's like that positive K love. You know, we they they say that for a reason because they only allow just anything positive, nothing negative. <laughs> they wouldn't they wouldn't like my songs. The Lord has given me because I preach in my songs. I preach, you know, the narrow way. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to make it in that in that industry, but if I did try to try to make it, I, I told my wife the other day. I said, if I if I because God, I'm not bragging when I say this, but God, you know, gave me a, He gave me a gift, that gift to write songs and play the guitar. And I thank God for it. It come from God. And I told my wife, I said, if I even tried to do that, if I tried to go to Nashville. And, and do that, they would kick me out just like that. Cause I said, honey, I'm gonna preach. I'm going I'm a preacher. I'm gonna preach the the narrow way. I'm gonna preach. I'm. And I even sing it in my music. You know, I'm gonna sing the cross. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about false doctrine even in my music. You know. So see, I wouldn't I wouldn't last on that. I wouldn't last long, and you wouldn't either, child of God. On the sound of my voice, if your faith is where it needs to be, you won't last in. In, in Nashville, <laughs> you won't last long in the enemy's camp because they'll kick you out if your faith is right. But if your faith ain't right, you're going to blend right into the enemy's camp. You're going to blend right in to, to the scattered faith movement, the hyper, all these hyper movements. You're going to, you're going to blend. Some of you are, you're blending in instead of saying some, speaking out, saying what needs to say. You want to just blend in with everybody. You don't want to rock the boat. We need some more children of God crying out. There's death in the pot. We need some more saying that. Praise God. Love y'all. Thank you for joining me tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah.